Welcome back. In this video, we are going to solve problem 14-7 that is taken from chapter number 14, Energy Methods and book name is Mechanics of Material by R.C. Hibbler. So, statement is determine the maximum force P and the corresponding maximum total strain energy stored in the truss without causing any of the member to have permanent deformation. Each member has the cross-sectional area of 2.5 into 10 to the power 3 square millimeter and is made of steel a36 steel so you can see this is the truss layer that is acted upon by a load p each truss having cross-sectional area is this one you can see i have written over here in meter it will be 2.5 into 10 to the power 3 square millimeter and there is a load p applied on it so you have to find the p load without causing any member to permanently deform and you have to determine the maximum total strain energy stored in truss without causing any member to be permanently deformed. So let's start with the solution. So first step is that we will find the normal forces in each member of truss. So how will you find this normal forces by using by using method of joint. So we will take joint and then we will apply the equation of equilibrium into in order to find this so let's take the joint a joint a so you can see here this is joint a where p load is applied due to this p load this member will be in tension as a result this member will exert a force which will be equal to fab in this direction and this member fad will be also in tension as a result this member FAD will exert a force in this direction on point A. So we will draw this. This is your point A. This is load P that is acting downward. Clear. This is your force FAB which is acting upward. Clear. And this is your force FAD which is acting over here. So first equation of equilibrium is that sum of all forces along x direction must be equal to zero and force toward right side will be taken as positive. So one force is F, FAD which is in negative direction and there is no other force. So it means that force applied by this member FAD on point A will be equal to zero. Now we will apply another equation of equilibrium that sum of all forces along y direction must be equal to zero and upward force is taken as positive. So FAB which is acting upward minus P is equal to zero. So from here this FAB will be equal to P. Now you can see that this is the force this member AB acts on point A in this direction. As a result force in member AB will be in this direction which is tension. So I will write this force FAB will be in tension. Now what we will do is that we will use joint B. So I will use joint B. So you can see here this is the joint B due to this load clear this member will uh, will elongate causing this this member will cause a force at point B in this direction this will be FAB similarly this FCB will there will be an axial load in this direction as a result this FCB will exert force at point B in this direction and this member will be in compression as a result this member will exert force FC FDB in this direction at point B so we'll uh, we will draw this free wire diagram over here. So this is your point B. At B we have FAB which is acting downward. So FAB is equal to P. Clear? Similarly FCB will be in this direction. Horizontal FCB in this direction. And FBD will be in, in this direction. This F B D. Also, you can see this is 1.5, this is 2. So, if I draw a right angle triangle over here, clear. So, if I multiply this length with 2, it will be equal to 3, and this length with 2, it will be 4. So, this is a basic triangle, clear. 
and I will draw the same triangle over here. This is 3, this is 4 and this is 5. Let this force is making angle theta. So we will find this forces by using equation of equilibrium. So what will be the equation of equilibrium? So equation of equilibrium, first equation of equilibrium is that sum of all forces along y direction must be equal to 0 and upward force is taken as positive. So FAB which is equal to P is acting downward. So P plus this force will have two components. One is this one and other one is vertical. So vertical component will be equal to FBD sine of theta is equal to 0. So minus P plus FBD and sine of theta is 3 over 5. If you look into this triangle is equal to 0. So from here we will get FBD into 3 over 5 is equal to P and FBD is equal to 5P over 3 which is equal to 1.667 times P. Now you can see this is the force that this member FBD, uh, this member BD acts at point P, B. So the force in this member CB will be in, in tensile. So I will write T, tension. This will be in tension. Uh, okay, this FBD, FBD. Sorry, we are talking about this, 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 this one, this one. So you can see that the force exerted by this member on point B is in this direction. As a result, force in this member will be compressive. So I will write it C. Now we will apply another equation of equilibrium that sum of all forces along x direction must be equal to 0 and force in this direction is taken as positive. So minus FCB clear plus this component which is FBD cos of theta is equal to 0. So minus FCB plus FBD is 1.6667 times P and cos of theta is equal to 4.5 is equal to 0. So from here you will get this FCB or BC will be equal to 1.333 times P. And this you can see that this is the force that member FCB exert at point P. As a result, force in this member will be tensile. So I will write tension. Okay. Now we have the, all the ex axial forces in the member of the truss. So we will find the axial strain energy. So I will write axial strain energy. And we know that axial strain energy Ui due to A axial will be equal to sum of N square L over 2 AE. Or you can also write it as sum of F square L over 2 AE. Clear? And we will, what we have is that we will use this formula. But before that, we know that we have area which is given as 2.5 into 10 to the power minus 3 square millimeter. And first we will find the maximum load P that can be applied. So from here you can see. FAB is equal to P, FBC is 1.33P and FBD is 1.67. So maximum force, maximum force is FBD and that is equal to 1.6667 times P. And we have been given that A36 steel. So for A36 steel, I will write E value and yield stress so e will we will check it in the property table so you can see here that this is the a36 steel so e is 200 gigapascal and yield strength is 250 megapascal so we will note down this this is 200 gigapascal which is 200 into 10 to the power 9 pascal and yield strength is 250 Megapascal, so 10 to the power 6 Pascal. So 
yield stress again the yield stress uh, yield stress we will have maximum load so let this is equal to fbd divided by area so yield stress is 250 into 10 to the power 6 and fbd is 1.3 uh, sorry fbd is 1.667 1.667 times p divided by area is 2.5 into 10 to the power minus 3 so from here when you calculate you will get the p load that is applied on this truss so when you get this p clear against the yield load so you can just put it in this formula you will get fab you will put p over here you will get fbd and you will put p over here you will get fcb so putting p is equal to 3.75 kilonewton in above equations you will get f a b is equal to 375 kilonewton f b d will be equal to 625 kilonewton and FBC will be equal to 500 kilo Newton. So these are the uh, axial forces in each member. Now we will also find we have length of this length of CB. L, B, C or CB. This is length of AB. Clear? So length of this BD can be obtained by using Pythagoras theorem. So this length of BD will be equal to 2 square plus 1.5 square under the root and that will be equal to 2.5 meter. So I will write it 2.5 meter. Now we will use this equation in order to find. So UI strain energy due to axial loading will be equal to some big sum of so for f a b square into length a b divide by two times area and e will be same because same material and same area is given plus f b d square into l b d divided by 2 a e plus f b c square into l b c divided by 2AE and since the force in this member AD is 0 you can see we will not include it so from here if you take 1 over 2AE common clear so it will be equal to FAB square into LAB plus FBD square into LBD plus FBC square into L P C. Now just put the values 1 over 2 multiply by 2.5 into 10 to the power minus 3 multiply by E which is 200 gigapascal. So 200 into 10 to the power 9. F A B. F A B is 375. So 375 into 10 to the power 3 square into a length of A B. AB is given as a length of AB is 1.5, length of BC is 2. So 1.5 plus FBC, FBD, which is 625. So 625 into 10 to the power 3 whole square into BD, BD length. BD length is 2.5 meter. So I will write 2.5 plus FBC so 500 into 10 to the power 3 square and length of BC is 2 so again this will give you strain energy due to axial loading so when you solve this you will get strain energy due to axial loading will be equal to 1687.5 joule or that will be equal to 1.69 kilo joules and this is the answer of our this question
and that was all about this problem 11 14-7 i hope you have enjoyed this video and you have learned from it those who are new to my channel then subscribe it and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you can get notification about my latest videos if you have any question you can ask me in comment section thank you for watching